Hello, welcome back to my studio. Today it's the turn of gouache painting. I'm going to paint a beautiful beach scene and I'm going to show you the important elements that went into this painting. I hope you can join me. Stick around, it starts in a moment. Now this scene that I'm painting is a fantastic subject. You could paint this in so many different ways. So I've got to simplify this scene and capture it in a small format like this. And that means I've got to pick out the most important elements. Now what I'm going to be focusing on is the light, but making that light really stand out. So, as I've been showing in the past few weeks, using a color wheel like this is helpful. And I'm going to be using basically a split complementary color scheme. So the yellow, orange, violet and blue. And this is more like a blue-violet. You've got different options here and it shows you when you add white to it the lighter tints you can get. So there's quite a lot of scope to manipulate that split complementary uh, color scheme. And this is going to make the light which will be in the yellow range, really stand out with the violets and the blues as well. There's of course scope to add other little colors as well, accents and so on. And you'll see how this unfolds in the painting. So let's have a look at how I started this and then work through the little painting. Start with the drawing. Just getting the horizon line in first, that's the most important line. And then everything else can be related to that horizon line. And the sketch is pretty rough as long as I have an idea of where everything is going. Colors are fairly standard. Just a, a little touch of orange in that lineup as well, just for convenience. So one of the things I'm going to do is extend the shadow along the front of this beach. You can just see it on the left hand side of the dunes. Now I'm going to bring that right across the foreground. But starting off with the sky, a bit of cerulean blue, titanium white, touch of alizarin, and I'll bring in a touch of lemon yellow to warm that up as the sky descends down to the horizon line using a flat nylon brush, just a, a cheap nylon brush like this, very easy to get down paint quickly, covers a lot of space. Of course gouache dries very quickly, especially in my warm climate, so I've got to also move quickly. And sometimes I have to paint over dry gouache if I don't like how it's turned out. And that's just the thing with gouache. Um, you can't be too precious with it. You have to move pretty fast. But it, if you don't like it, you can go over it again. The big trick is to have enough paint of that color to cover your area. Otherwise you can get join marks and things like that quite easily. It's almost impossible painting in this Impressionist style to get an accurate color mix every time. Um, so just get enough paint to cover the area you want. A few highlights with lemon yellow and titanium white. And I'll develop this as I go along. I think the this needs to be warmed up a bit more, lightened up. I want to get a bright sky effect. So a little bit more lemon yellow into that sky. Now getting the darks of the dune, a bit of orange, ultramarine blue, touch of alizarin, also a bit of burnt sienna in that ultramarine to get that strong dark. And then the hazy dunes in the distance a lot cooler with more white and blue, kind of a grey in, in the end. 
adding some warms there with a bit of desaturated orange. A little blue in orange quickly desaturates orange, so just be careful you don't put too much blue and get some mud. Just dropping in a few suggestions of highlights on buildings in the distance as well. And then a sort of a grey down yellow ochre and cerulean and white for the distant dunes as well. Colour temperature is just so critical. Right now with a bigger brush and we'll just get some foreground colours in. This is a cerulean and white touch of alizarin in there. And I'm just going to start working on this shadow. Layering it in in big strokes. Dropping some alizarin in. This is almost a watercolor approach except it's with opaque paint but quite thin. I just want it to flow easily. I'll work over it with layers as I go. And just trying to keep it interesting. Some variety, some brushwork up and down, side to side. Just get in your first layer, block that in. And these touches of alizarin suggest warm light reflecting into those shadows. But it also creates harmony. Now the bluish violet colors and the violet colors below all creating a, a harmony. Remember that um, color wheel we looked at? Yellow oranges, the blues and violets. Bit of uh, ultramarine in there to get a warmish green. But it's not really green, it's all in with that um, orange and blue scheme. This to suggest some direction lines. There's a lot of things on the beach that wash up dried seaweed and what have you. So suggesting a few of those things, but they serve a purpose, creating little dark accents and direction lines for the eye to follow. Distant sea in the next bay, a light blue, kind of a a very light grayish blue and then going over it with a darker color keeping some light between the water and the beach in the distance just a sliver of light now it's at this join up with the foreground that I'm going to bring in some strong opaque warm color lemon yellow deep yellow white and even a touch of orange will come into it and this is the focal area the sort of spark against all the cool colors a bit of orange in that white there getting almost a peach like color and then I'll bring in more yellows and this is more or less an intuitive process Go back to the accents in the rocks, just little bits of dark. And as I'm painting that, the sort of warm beach colors are drying down a bit, so I can go over them again. So you work different areas of the paper to let wet paint dry or get semi dry, and then you can work over it with the next layer and not mess it up. Just one of those things you must be mindful of with gouache. Keeping your color notes clean is important. 
Now more of the yellow whites coming in for those highlights. Dropping it in fairly thick on top of the semi-dry layers below. You got to stand back and see if it looks right. You need to adjust that line. Just break it up and it now it looks much better. A few little drops of sparkle. Yeah, sort of a light violet color. Just to suggest that wet sand. A few little dots and dashes. And uh, pretty much done. Using a Winsor & Newton brush here, this is a little sable brush, I think at number two, which is super for this purpose. Get a bit more color up there, just lighten that cloud up a bit. Now to bring it together with a figure in the focal point, a few more sparks, I'm signing it off in some pencil, I'll get the tape off and we'll have a closer look. I hope that was useful to you and you've got a few ideas. Remember, simplification is the key. Go for big shapes and big shapes of strong color. That color contrast, light and dark, warm and cool. And get yourself one of these. It's very useful to just remind you of the important colors that you need to emphasize and how they're going to work for you as you do the painting. This stops you from just randomly putting in different colors and hoping for the best. Stick to the main elements, get your values right, and your painting should look good. Well, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so now. There's plenty of painting videos coming up in the future. And there's a free little painting course for you to check out up here. Please go ahead and you can start within minutes. Alright, until next time, happy painting and cheers for now.